rain in here, which I love to see. He'll also play as uh, the Stova from time to time, but I really like the way that Sean plays that role. Here they go fast towards the C site. They've already met with Sabroza, who's found two from around the default box. The Cyber Cage is up and gives them a bit of cover, but there's a heal coming in for the Reina. Still on site is Hayes, able to pick off one before being traded out by Gimon. And it's going to result in a two-on-three numbers advantage for TSM as they come in on the retake. Shock Dart comes into position, but won't interrupt the plant. So the spike will go down. And again, it's down to two. There's the Aldrone going in first, spawning away positions. You've got Gimon very low on HP. Just One nine hit points, ready. trying to survive. Down goes his teammate. It's all up to Gimon, and there's just no way. TSM retake the site with three surviving and a masterful pistol round. They started things off very well for TSM. Having Sabroza and, play, and Hayes play inside that C side, they already saw that push coming up, so Sabroza slowed it up. So the early play still being advanced upon over on Long A. You've got that jet holding the op, holding the line. Might have a shot on the Cypher. There it is. So you can see player one picked off by the jet of uh, Wardell. That aggressive play finally pays off. So it's Gen G now operating at a player disadvantage. All that spam through the cyber cage is so close. Doing a little bit of damage. He's hitting them shot after shot in the leg. Getting hit by the tripwire though. The jet's on the site. There's the Leer coming out from Sean, but it doesn't really help too much. As Taze didn't even see it. Mordell on site trying to survive a little while longer. Dashing around. Did manage to find three, but Quinn is there to save the day. It's all up to Drone. The 1v2. Can the Phoenix manage to make this one work? First kill there on the money, but not enough against Sean. Gen G narrowly survive it. They'll step to the trap wires and go for a big flank if they want to, but they play the angles instead. They're looking for a big push in fight B. Hayes in an interesting position as Quinn flies through the dark cover and gets vertical as well with the updraft. Makes it difficult to spot him. And the spike will be planted. Now, Sabroza does have a flank play, but oh no, the timing almost worked out Jump's so over. well for player Look one. Dead. Sabroza, though, has them in a really good spot. As Mikhail is watching the flank, the retake is already underway on the site. Now it's all up to Mikhail yet again. It's not going to happen. Well played as drones run it back. Finally fades 10 and 2 for Wardell at the top of the scoreboard for CSM. It will be round number four as they steal the lead away. I've seen a lot of, I saw a lot of pog slides and a lot of cat jams. It seems pretty. What I mentioned before, we saw Sabroza went for that flank, and that trap wire is still up there on that mini map. So he's deciding uh, for these few rounds, the past few rounds, every single time had read things correctly. We're to, like always going towards the opposite round of where the pressure is. But that Al Drone's gonna give out their position, and Drone peeks out, but he'll. He's only good for him. Traded off by Mikael as they're pushing inside the site. Gonna be hard for Hayes to hold it off. He gets paranoid, but still gets the kill on the win. As now through the cyber gate, gets a second one and a third one up to GMD at the graffiti. That I know exactly. It's gonna be just the are. last man standing. Kind of a neuro theft. You know, it's not wasted in the eyes of TSM because they just want to make sure that they secure the round. And it's gonna be PL1 trying to save his weapon for the rest. Player one does get a nice pick off there on the Sabroza, and with the time being what it is, there's the Neural Theft coming through. <laughs> Feeling pretty confident to go for that peak, hoping to catch Wardell off guard. Not gonna be the case today towards A. One of the slower plays that we've seen from Genji so far. Quinn's gonna drop a smoke down and try to push on through. The ult being popped does allow the Omen to get into heaven. Left. But they've still got Phoenix in hell. You've got drones wow. still on site, but they didn't even see him somehow not spotted, and everything falls apart. A flawless round from Tiaj there. It almost set them up, but it wasn't quite enough. Back into the action we go as the second half commences. TSM on the attack, trying to gain access to the B site. Quinn does some decent damage, sticks around a little too long, and Gimon not able to best Wardell in the fight. However, they're going to be moving over towards C, so they get that B control, and they're going to split towards the C site instead. There's a gap in the cloud burst that allows a little bit of damage to be dealt. Player one just keeps tapping, and eventually Wardell kind of wanders into it. And it'll give Gen G a little bit of a leg up, but they still have the disadvantage. It's a four on three. And the Shut spike's down. been planted by TSM. This is a really big strat. They had to come up huge there with the kills are. in the front. But let's see the retake attempt from Gen G as they're all grouped up towards the spawn side. The first one to beat to get information. It is going to be Hayes. Wide swing as Miguel punishes him for that. Now he spots a couple more, but his teammates blocked him to start things off, and player one gets picked in the face right. just right. behind. And that is going to leave now Sean on a two versus one with a clock still ticking on that spike. He's trying to move forward, switch it to the ghost, but you could know, you could tell that it's pretty much over at this point. When the spike is planted all the way back there, 
It's GG. A nice round coming in for TSM. It is going to be 8-5. to five. But as I mentioned here, Bach, before... We have the firepower you would want, given what's happening currently. Wardell's holding just a ghost. He does have full armor, at least, but... Things could get ugly real fast here for Wardell. There's the smoke coming in, but he's just prepared. Too aware of what's coming in that direction. He needs to back up the one. The Cloudburst comes out at a bad time, but it's Man. Drone, who just mops up four kills for the Phoenix. Knows there's players moving towards C, but really, what can be done? Iman has a great flash that comes through, somehow gets the kill on the drone. But Wardell goes on a shooting spree. Gen G going to get at least one kill as player one steps up with the Sheriff. But not exactly the home run they needed. It's more of a sacrifice bunt. <laughs> it's going to come down to a two on three. You've got Sean moving into position. The Stinger does work out okay for the Reyna. Mikael just behind. No surprise that Sean is one of the players in this position. He's been here before, and he's Fight managed planted. to find success for them in the past. Out goes the Leer. The Dark giving away their positions, but it's a great spike plant position coming in for TSM. Now there's weapon upgrades on the site, and you can see Sean's the first one to try to grab one. Recon Dark does go out, gives away positions. They know that there's no one on the site currently. It's going to be a difficult scenario for them, and yeah, now it's even harder. They needed that rifle to survive. At that point, you saw the desperate shock darts that came through. But at least they have this map point. It's 12 to 6, and it's also a broken economy for Gen G. No more meddling. Sabroza picks off the first of the defense. Player one does do significant damage. An additional damage dealt as well to Cypher. Sabroza finding another kill on the win as he clips the bullets through the wall. Gimon, yeah, he'll hear it, spots out the positional change coming in from Sabroza. And that's at least a nice opportunity for Gen Chi to try and find an, a bit of an opening. Again, though, they're at the disadvantage, and even more so, I don't think they realize that Cutler has actually made it out onto C. Yeah. He's up on top of the left. stacks in the corner. The rest of the team is starting to make their way out, and they're going to secure the spike. spike now, planted. Gimon is stuck in a really difficult position because he's got players... Coming in potentially through doors, that's Drone who's sitting on the back end of the play, and then he's got players waiting for him in the seaside as well. So he really needs his teammates coming in from spawn to put pressure on in. TSM. One but it's a trade-off and an advantage for TSM. So it's leaving only one more player, and he gets picked up by Wardale, and TSM win. will take this You're first battle. As the Jet. And it looks like we're going to see a B site execute here in just a moment. You've got... Mikael waiting around the corner, probably going to see Jet go in first. There's the, the uh, arrow coming out, and the shock dart does a boatload of damage, no pun intended. As they try to work their way into the site, they're going to have to deal with the players inside Boathouse. Currently, there's still one more. It's Gimon. He's got a leaping target, but it's toe shots that work out for Gimon. Ultimately bested by Wardell, but Ooh. the damage was dealt. Great damage as well being dealt by Wardell as the dink shot comes through. 30 seconds They've left. They've got site control, but they don't feel comfortable going Here. for the spike plant just yet. Well, they have sort of an advantage right now in terms of positioning, especially with two heavy hitters with Sabrosa and Wardell. It can still be doable. Right. He's and with the plan, but through the smoke, unfortunately, player one gets the headshot onto Sabrosa. Now there's only 13 seconds left. He has to commit for a plan at this point. This Ten is where they're going to jump left. in. He gets a nice shot there onto win. Now there's six seconds. He's getting pushed by Sean, and Sean dispatches him in Jinji corner. And there's the darts coming in Get on both sides. Way. Quinn masked off currently. Wardell. Pops the ult. Does he go for that vertical play up and over the wall? There it is. There's the updraft. You can see him start that motion, Nowhere looking for a player up in heaven, not quite going to spot them. There's the Hunter's Fury coming out. Mikael drops Haze. Drone is in the entry, but traded out immediately by player one, who gets a bit of a lucky frag onto the next target. Leaping around on sight, there's still one more present. 30 seconds left. The shock dart's not going to be where it needs to be. It's now down to a two on three, and TSM again with a disadvantage has watched it just evaporate. Player one finds three. Tried to use the Hunter's Fury as a masking utility. So with that ult so left. loud, you sometimes don't hear the port. But there's a port coming in for the defense. That'll allow the Omen to get into the back of sight in the boathouse. That's now Gimon backing up this B-side defense. It's down to just two, and one of them, Sabroza. He was so low on HP, his last timing almost there with that spam. Might be able to still find one. A refresh on the dark cover. 
as Sean starts to spam through, but his targets have actually already gone past and in towards the site they go. Gwen starts getting spammed through the box, doesn't stand a chance. Wow. Imon actually able to do a little bit of extra damage, but now Sean is on damage control, trying to spin back seconds left. his team, Spike waiting planted. for the remaining two to get into position. It's a promising look for TSM that puts them in the driver's seat on this A site. And they've managed to scoop up a bit of hardware to work with as well. Sean now shifting back towards short as his teammates get into position. The Aldrone will be coming through. There's one right to their immediate right by the big tree. That's Hazed. And just like that, it's all spun around. Down to the breach. It's Drone with a great first shot on the PL1. But a 3k for Sean neutralizes the 3k from Drone. It will be a seventh round from Gen G. And the damage is water under the bridge as the money has already ballooned. Wait. Oh, oh, oh. Almost clipped by Wardell, who was holding the line. But again, they've got control of A. They're just trying to figure out what they do here. This is a very awkward setup. The spike is across the map. Now, Sabroza does pick off player one, and Wardell's found a pick as well. Mm -hmm. Again, this is just really awkward, but now the spike has made it over, and they've isolated these players. They had a one-on-one -on, -one on B, but Sean has shifted away, knowing that the spike is actually spike heading A. That gives Wardell an opportunity to flank. And that results in Sean having to watch their backs, but they get around the bend just in time to dodge that. And Sean is just waiting for Wardell on the other side. So it's a two on three retake. Very much winnable for Gen G, but TSM has to make a mistake. A big mistake on top of that. And Sean at that point doesn't even want to pop up the Empress. So they know at this point they kind of want to go for it, but only halfway, not fully correct. That's what he do. He's looking for the third, and he gets it! They're going to be able to get this one on a two versus three, make that even a two versus four, and Genji turns it around. I can't believe that just happened. I thought they were just going to try to do econ damage. Did it from the LNG, yeah. not the type of play you expect to see. Double digits in the assists as well. He's gone for that double, double miss shot from Wind. Allows them an opening on the spike. There's a quick shot coming up from Gimon. Wind gets redemption on the follow up. Looking for another, but can't quite find it. You've got players pushing in close. The door's been shut. And now you've got the advance coming in from Drone, but it's all too late. Mikhail, of course, the last one to get involved. There's only Drone, the first point of contact, playing all the way up heaven. So they're playing for some sort of a retake as well for TSM. Cutler spamming through the dark cover. There's damage dealt currently to Cutler, and he's the lowest one on the battlefield, currently Shadows sitting below Cutler. 50 HP. Getting that dangerous uh. hue of red. Kills piling up for Gen G though as Mikhail and Sean try to make things a little bit easier for them. Drone brings it back to a three on three. There's that potential follow up for Drone. Just can't quite make it happen. Sabrosa swings wide spot. Sean, but there's e one and taking out his counterpart. And now it's all up to Drone. Dropping into position. The fault line was right on the money. Here we go. Here we go. The aftershock coming out. Is it going to be enough to move him? The position changes for Huynh, but it's going to be so difficult for Drone to try and spot this out in time. Not much can be done. At that point, the clock was already too far gone anyway. Well played by Gen G. As I've heard, no surprise there. Quinn will likely be the one to dash out, and there it is. The likely paranoia as well off to the left at some point to guarantee access to the site being a little bit easier. Spike now just making its way on the site. Sabroza has picked off one. There's a trade Spike coming out, planted. and Sean chimes in as the Reina, a dismissed peak. It be so infuriating as a player to be on the other side of that one. So watch that ghost-like figure disappear, and just like that, the odds disappearing for both teams, actually. It's come down now to a two-on-two. Two. Sean has done what Sean does best. There's the rolling thunder coming from to try and make the retake a bit easier, but they still got to deal with Sean. He's already got one ace this series, oh make it two. As Sean has found... And Hayes has to hold up huge. Hayes uh, trying I to do what he exactly can, but Gen G just flies out and explodes on the site. The neural theft giving them that remaining player position. Bordell, he's got a dart in his belly. The Aldrin flies past. Now the spike has still not made it down and touched pay dirt yet. Uh, and oh, Bordell was feeling saucy. One of that spam I shot on it. the spike planner, no less. There's a fault line coming in. Run, but it's looking like this one's over. And in fact, it is Flawless. Gen G, Attack. who's back on the stairs. Here they go. There's the dark cover coming in. That'll help neutralize Sabrosa's position. The paranoia might just be a little bit too late. The flash comes in, and Cutler doesn't stand a chance. 
Kills piling up in both directions as they trade blows back and forth. The turret also doing a little bit of extra damage, helping slow spike. things down. But, yeah, the spike's been dropped. It's been lost in heaven. And you can see them actually starting to filter out as they need to find a new way to get back to it. And what I was trying to left. say before we actually got into this game was Jinji. They had to play a different style versus Sentinels. They had to play a different style versus Envy. And now they have to play a different style versus ESM that actually brings a Viper into their, their uh, lineup as well. But with that, though, with them trying to push aggressively inside of this uh, B side, it was perfectly held by the two players up Ten on seconds left. and Sabroza being the remaining. main cause of that. But now it's back to a one versus one because drops into it a site. Should be an easy kill here for Wardell. He's waiting for it. And there's that kill. Not even allowing Mikael to get the plant, just securing that by Rivington, the Nano Swarm, the Alarm Bot. And of course, we've also got the Breach here, ready and willing to slow things down. There's the flashes coming out as they start to make their push. Drone has to go big, as they've already got up one up in heaven. Nice flick over from Sabroza with the off. But now they flash out as they try and slow this down even more. Drone's in wow. position with a Spectre, able to gun down Mikael. The battle goes Dusted. back and forth, but it's TSM who manages to bring it down to a two-on-two, -two, and the clock is on their side. 15 seconds left, and drones still here on the site. They haven't been able to stop the spike oh. 10, 10 seconds, seconds left. GMD is on a two versus one. Really, he just got to look into the site. He's looking to at least try to go for a one and and player demanding. But he hears the footsteps no, across the board, that. and that's it. They're going to win on something for TSM, and that Ooh. is a Herculean hold. Poor drone. We're gonna have drone that's gonna throw some flashes, but when the road team comes through, you have a toxic uh, toxic screen still available from Hayes to put the wall up, so they use the flash points later on and retake together as a team. But Sean was just too good holding his angle from the elbow side as that raise and just pops him off again. You can't deny how Sean is good right now in this series. So, despite them having the utilities for the retake, you just had to try to land your shot to get to that team player from Genji, which they did. Quick shots coming out from Huynh. After we saw Cutler pick things up first. Gen G bring us back to three on three. There's the ult. Sending Sabroza into attacker spawn. They're going to watch their flank, though. They got to keep an eye on their six. Now, Haze is still in position. With all the utility that's laid down from their Killjoy, they have some things they still have to work through. Despite the fact that Cutler is watching... Not currently alive. That utility still remains. Well, most concerning, obviously, the alarm bot, which is waiting right around the corner. Do they spot it? Well, no, it does get triggered, and it gives away the flight towards left. heaven. They've still got Sabrosa on the flank. They've got Haze here as well, but Wardell... Uh, wait, excuse me, watching that line. Missed shot from Win though. And a rare miss at that. That puts the attackers in a really weird position. They have to run to this B site where now they're going to be wandering into Wardell, who's got the knives Ten out. Seconds left. He's waiting for them. He's ready. One Does he hit the clicks? There's the first one going his way. The smoke Woo. comes down, but Wardell with the jumping knife from the blades. It's inside B. Ugh. Even strength, as I say that, Hayes gets a, a nice line of sight onto Quinn to change that. Enemy down. And Hayes... Still going big for heaven. Wants a little bit more, sticks around too long. Needs backup from Sabrosa, who actually comes I up empty handed. Exactly so despite the early heroics from the Viper, Anti Venom has been applied and they've brought themselves to a three on three. They're going to start working their way into the B site. And they should be able to get across. Deep camera coming in, but there's that. Difficult ult to deal with the Rolling Thunder. The Showstopper as well sends a rocket into spawn. A breach charge coming out as they start to work their way in. Cutler's got one going right around the corner. There's player one from up on top. Player one's going to find them all. It's four kills on the round. A uh, win for this attacker side team. So Wardell is getting full time to be pushed back, but he's looking to trade his way. avenged fallen teammate, but he misses a shot, unfortunately. So that's a lot of mid control available here for Gen G that they can split wherever they want. And because of that, you see Wardell rotate right away on Heaven's side because you did pop your Viper's Pit for Haze, and you can't cover Heaven. So Wardell this time has to come up huge again at Heaven's side. Wardell getting closer and closer. Reaches towards the targets, pulls the knives out, but just can't quite line up the blades. And now Haze hiding in that thick cloud of venom. 
waiting for the push to come through. We'll pick off the first target. That's John going down. Hayes is playing this one masterfully and illustrating just how brutal that ult can be. Hayes now sneaking into the site. Hit one right the corner. And it'll come down to this. It's player one as that decay takes him down to one HP. He'll start to recuperate some of his health, but not all, as he took quite a few bullets in the side. 30 seconds left. 77 HP and 30 seconds to work with. You've got Breach in Heaven and Killjoy with Spawn now going back up those stairs to join their teammate. It's Drone and Cutler on the other side. I have retrieved the spike. And player one has picked up the spike. Now working straight towards them, wanting to just take the fight to their doorstep, and Drone is waiting. Two maps, but that's it. I think he was stuck here at the bottom with only three to five kills, maybe even three kills to end that half. And those are the three kills that we mentioned Spike before. planted. But this time, though, it's going to be TSM not letting go of that gas pedal. And they're moving forward inside a four plant already. And Wardell's going to be the one pushing forward with the Frenzy. A nice fault line that's going to daze win. And Wardell goes for the kill. Counter smokes or counter flashes as well. And TMD retaliates for that. One spotted stuck inside of that power pot at L. But they're still doing a great job to clear it out. Wardell's in the corner where he has to peek out. And he gets picked off. It's a two versus two. The spike is still planted for TSM. SM as the wall comes up here for Hayes. He retakes the position one of Cordell when he fell, but his teammate falls at the same time. He's on a two versus one. He's clutched to be four, but he cannot do it this time. GMD kills him, and Gen G gets the defuse, maybe? They got it. It's going to be close, the but they certainly got it. 1.63 left on the clock as Gen G. Raider for TSM to take the series, so they had to play a bit more aggressively. And Gale starts that way, and Hayes picks him off. But at least, oh no, not at least, actually. It was a nice combo from. A drone and to Sabrosa to get the flashpoint for Sabrosa to get through and more map control. So unfortunately for them here, they lose two players early and Sean's already down at 9 HP. The chances look super grim here for Gen G to try to take this round on this bonus. A lot of weight being shifted towards A currently from TSM. Toxic screen goes down. Sabrosa is a lurking threat at the bottom of ropes as the team now starts to make their way out. There's the nade coming in. That's the tell. There's one around the corner. Sean is so low on HP. It's an easy kill. Him on around from elbow, but not really able to do much there. As player one is now the last one standing. TSM look really good in the first full buy round. A flawless victory. Two player D rather, and somehow he just gets that. That big play from, uh, from Cutler to clutch that one versus one. That is brutal. There's a nice pickup as well coming in from Wardell, spamming through the sign. Blocking sight. But there's trades coming back in for Gen G, working with suboptimal machine guns of the sub machine gun variety. And it's worked out for them. Now, Quinn's in position. There's the flashpoint through the cloud burst, making it hard to spot his target. But Wardell eventually breaks past that spiraling smoke and brings us to this point. Going big right now, but it's all up to Sean. Sean has been lights out all series long. He's got one target beneath, Ooh. but no! Attacker the wall wins. takes the stinger and sends its recoil flying.